All right, I want to do a video on this article. It's an IGN article, and IGN has typically been... I mean, I, I don't know this for a fact necessarily, but all my followers, people have been telling me that they're pretty much a shill site, generally speaking, especially for Star Wars. So this is interesting to me because if they're a shill site, does this mean the worm is finally turning? Are even the mainstream shill sites, are they breaking now and actually talking legit about these Star Wars shows and stuff like that. So let's just let's just see what they say and we'll, we'll go from there. Ahsoka's finale showcases some of Star Wars' biggest problems. Oh, Amelia Emberwing. Focus on all the delightful tricks and treats of the season. Unfortunately, I still can't get the taste of Ahsoka's season finale out of my mouth. So we'll spend more time on the spooky stuff later this month. For now, the trick is blah, blah, blah. At the beginning of season one, I wrote, can Ahsoka survive being Rebel season five? Amazingly, that didn't end up being its problem, at least not its biggest one. Ahsoka wasn't hamstrung by being a fifth season of a show. Not everyone watched or people not understanding some characters motivations or who other characters were entirely in the end the problem was that whether it was called ahsoka season one or rebel season five it didn't end up being a season of television at all instead it was individual nostalgia plays sprinkled through long patches of nothingness and what makes that so frustrating is that creator dave filoni absolutely rocks at delivering impactful okay there's the shill there's the shill moments at delivering impactful emotional engaging and most importantly original star wars stories or at least he usually does i'm willing to bet that this person amelia m ember wing probably watched rebels and probably watched clone wars as a kid i think when you go back and watch it as an adult you'll realize it's actually not that good it actually kind of sucks and dave filoni is not really that good at driving emotion at all in any of his stories there's a little bit in the clone wars you know here and there a little bit in rebels here and there but nothing i mean nothing major i mean it's mostly same as these these live action shows it's just everything drags on it's you know they're trying to come up with new ideas and so they rip off other ips and blah blah, blah. whatever it doesn't matter i disagree with that but i want to be clear i love the character ahsoka harris and doula criminally underused in this season one of the best contemporary star wars characters she wasn't just underused she her character was pointless in this show really i mean she didn't really do anything so I, I don't even know what the point of her even being there was. I quickly grew to love Ezra Bridger after catching up on Rebels and meeting him in live action in this new series. And there were even a couple of episodes of Ahsoka that really tugged at my Star Wars loving heart. The first two episodes felt really like Star Wars, which never stops being a great feeling. And yeah, of course, the Anakin episode got in my fee-fees. It's the music. It's always the damn music. Yeah, that scene was totally pointless and dumb. She didn't need to be motivated. She already was fighting. Like the whole, that whole, this whole show is, anyways. But getting me in my feelings is easy as I'm secretly a huge sap. And I think that's true for most Star Wars fans right now. People that are still liking what Disney's doing. They know they can get just enough viewers to justify their shows with enough nostalgia bait and things like that getting in people's feels. But they're not writing compelling stories and television seasons have a job to tell a complete story regardless of whether or not they're meant to lead into something else ahsoka doesn't doesn't just not tell a complete story but the fraction of the one it does tell just hangs in the air like the big bad thing they were trying to stop all season thrawn returning to the main galaxy doesn't matter at all it doesn't matter the whole show doesn't matter urgency is apparently a young rebels game by the end of the season not a single one of our main characters addresses the fact that the very thing that everyone was trying to stop happened this is absolutely on point ahsoka is completely at peace seemingly indifferent to the threat the galaxy now faces despite the entire motivation of her character has been to stop thrawn since her introduction into the live action stories exactly and she doesn't even seem to care she's in another galaxy she's far from home it's just her and sabine everyone she knows is gone everybody's gone thrawn made it to the other galaxy and she's just kind of standing there with this sort of half smile with her arms crossed and you're like what and that's that's what i'm saying there's no emotion there's no real like why does anyone care if the characters don't care about what they're apparently motivated to do why do i care ahsoka should have been livid should have been upset she just said sabine you idiot you should never should have done this look now we're stuck here what are we gonna do no, it's just fold my arms and half smile and say everything's hunky-dory. It's just awful. And so this shill is getting it now. She sees it, and I'm really happy about that. Hera and Ezra meet up and neither exchanges a word about what his return means. Exactly! The excitement these characters show, characters show to be reunited is important, of course, and not at the cost of engaging with your series' own stakes. Absolutely, it would have been easy, as easy as following up their tear-brim smiles with, a, with the dawning realization of what seeing each other truly 
uh, again, truly meant, or Ezra pointing it out to Hera, who may not have realized that his return included the return of Thrawn. 100%. People said, well, they, they did hug. It just happened off screen. Everything happens off screen in Star Wars now. Everything that we want to have happen in matters seems to happen off screen to the show. The show will say, well, it, they did hug. Of course they did. They just didn't show it. Why didn't they show it? Why didn't they show it? Why didn't they show anything? Everything's off screen. Luke's whole thing off screen. He's, he's a completely different person now off screen. What's Ahsoka doing off screen during the OT? What's you know, Everything's off screen. And that's not compelling. I don't want to watch off screen. I want to watch on screen. That's why I turned the screen on in the first place. Sabine has made it abundantly clear that she's willing to sacrifice a whole galaxy if it means getting Ezra back home. So at least one person's reaction makes sense. Yes, yeah, her not caring and her being stuck with Sabine, I guess, makes sense because she's a 15-year-old girl in a 30-year-old woman's body and she's dumb and she's willing to sacrifice everybody else just for her own agenda yes okay fine <laughs> we'll give you that one that's that's it we just end there why well because we're either setting up dave filoni's movie or ahsoka season two two things that should be wildly exciting but now could end up in star wars purgatory with the rest of the franchise's many abandoned plans for all i care seasons of television are not commercials they are foundations for what's to come but ahsoka season one can't stand on its own because there's no foundation built just a string of happenings until ahsoka and sabine are stranded and thrones back in the galaxy prime and that's what i've been saying all along too everything just sort of happens oh no they took the map ball what do we do oh look the whales showed up yay like nobody did anything it just happens everything just happens and that's feloni's writing guys like this is not new to him this is how he rolls so all you guys are like Filoni! everything just happens in in feloni verse everything just happens in the sequels right ray just knows this knows that and so we have to just make up stuff that maybe happened off screen to kind of justify why this stuff just sort of happens at least the shills sure do it's terrible and if none of our primary characters give a shit about that then why should we as viewers exactly the whole point none of them care they're all just like yep thrones back meh it's just a bunch of meh it's just a, if there was an emoji movie they're all meh emojis <laughs> let the past die clip if you have to nostalgia is great i love nostalgia but it's meant to be a single tool in your arsenal rather than your only instrument uh-huh skywalkers have been so aggressively shoehorned into so many stories they don't need to be in that it's getting to the point that i don't even want to hear their name anymore the galaxy is vast there are now many of them even there's there excuse me there are now many of them even there are so many rich stories worth exploring and all star wars seems capable of doing is returning to the same well over and over again i enjoy luke i adore leia their stories are over but not as over as their father's is meant to be yeah and now anakin's going to be the new the new father which is, is again, a totally pointless arc. The Force should be a mystery. I know people say, well, George said he was going to put the wills. Yeah, they're dumb too. They're dumb too. The Force is supposed to be a mystery. It's supposed to be something over everything that you don't fully get to understand. And now Anakin goes from like a, a absolute mass murdering psycho and then, and he, okay, he, he didn't want the Emperor to kill his son. Great, okay, redemption, fine. And now he's going to be the father? What? That doesn't make any sense. It's just... But it's got, you have to, to shoehorn him in. And then Ahsoka will be the daughter and, you know, somebody else will be the son, who knows. But, you know, it's like, they just can't make up anything new. Everything's got to be rehashed. Ahsoka to know as much more than her master why then are most of the only parts of the series worth engaging with when anakin is around it's not that he shouldn't have been in the series at all there's justification there although he didn't see luke but he somehow is all interested in ahsoka hmm just as there was for young luke and leia to be involved in the obi-wan kenobi but ahsoka is meant to be dave filoni's pride and joy how is she out here playing second fiddle to a corpse i don't know what happened here or how ahsoka never ended up being a show about ahsoka but it's a tremendous bummer and a rare miss from the creator because he sucks you guys he sucks. He sucks. And my my guess is that when he was writing the Clone Wars, the stuff that was good, he probably got a lot of help with it. Whereas this, he wrote himself, and it sucks. Uh, it's like it's like people who think Bill Belichick's a good coach, but as soon as Tom Brady's not on his team, his record's awful. He doesn't make the playoffs. He's b well below five hundred. He's not that good of a coach. Obviously, if he can't coach without Tom Brady, Filoni's not that good of a writer. If he can't write without having Anakin show up to to bait you. Think about it. It doesn't make any sense. A, mi a miss that could have been avoided if, if the title character was allowed to stand on her own two feet with a single shred of her personality. She had no personality. And before anyone goes blaming Rosario Dawson, we've seen her show emotion and be engaged in The Mandalorian. This isn't a performance. No, it's a directional. She's a good actress. She's shown emotion and tons of stuff. That's nothing to do with her. It's, it's her. It's, she's being directed to act like that by the dummy who's doing the directing. Just to clear something up right out of the gate, I love fan service. I have a little nerdy moment. They are great. They are fun. And once again, they are tools. They are never under any circumstance meant to be the whole ship 
shebang. No, that's correct. Star Wars lately? Nearly nothing but fan service. Yup. Not you, Andor, and a good hunk of the Mandalorian. Even shows I enjoy like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Bless it. It's pointless. But I had a good time. Are wrapped up with this never-ending cycle of, well, it's what the fans want. No, the fans did not want Obi-Wan fighting Vader again and again. And it is pointless because at the end of the day, the only thing it could do is change canon in the OT. And the show itself didn't offer anything. It didn't accomplish anything. It didn't change any story other than to say, oh, now, now we know that Vader fought Kenobi twice. But nothing changed in terms of the overall story other than now it just sounds dumb and some of the lines in the ot but they didn't actually accomplish anything it was just a giant bag of nostalgia that's literally all it was and no the fans didn't want that you probably did because you're a shill but the rest of us didn't the job of his creative isn't to give viewers exactly what they want the job of his creative is to give them what they never thought they could have wanted exactly art is meant to inspire new worlds to push boundaries to explore corners of the galaxy we never could have dreamed of but ever since the last jedi dared to go outside the traditional expectations and an outcry no 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 that's no 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 that's another one of the off screen if they had explained clearly and given a good reason for luke to be the way he was we would have accepted it we don't accept luke pulling a lightsaber out even if it was a fleeting moment on his nephew that goes against his character and then becoming this recluse bum while the galaxy goes to shit again that's what we don't accept because that's not luke if you can explain a a logical reason why he was a, a recluse on an island then that's fine maybe the explanation is he 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 married he married Mary Jade and he did something that caused her to die right and he couldn't forgive himself something like that anything that would give a reasonable explanation other than I had a fleeting moment and pulled a lightsaber out on my on my nephew on my sister's kid because I did and then that's it and that's what we got so no it wasn't that they changed expectations it's that they purposely subverted them and then didn't do a good job of subverting them that's why the sheer mention of Tatooine should be exciting instead it's so overused. It just makes me roll my eyes at this point. It should be downright thrilling to hear mention. Yeah, well, Tatooine was always supposed to be this backwater planet. Now it's just like the planet that everybody's on all the time. Even the fact that the Inquisitors showed up on Tatooine, to me, diminishes Tatooine because that wouldn't be a place that would be a priority. It's a crappy dump and there's like five Inquisitors showing up there. Why? Why would they suspect anything's there? There's no reason to even go there. Literally why they brought Luke there. <laughs> it was because nobody would show up. It should be downright thrilling to hear mentions of Luke, but each time he gets shoehorned in, another hunk of that excitement gets sacrificed to the Sarlacc bit. Yes, and that's also due to just too much content, which I've been saying all along. There's too much. You, you, to build hype, you need gaps. The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, so each one of these series had so much opportunity to push the boundaries of the universe in which they exist. That's the whole point of introducing television to an existing film franchise. By adding long-form storytelling into your sagas, you have the opportunity to explore parts of your galaxy that um, have never been touched or to give more meaning to an already beloved character journey. Instead, Lucasfilm has squandered most of their opportunities in favor of hanging out on Tatooine some more. <laughs> I like this article. Good on you, girl. This is funny. A couple weeks ago, IGN's Clint Gates said that Star Wars just feels like unboxing videos now and I absolutely hate it. It does. It's, it's, it's too much. It's crappy. It's sloppy. And they're doing too many volumes, like too many green screens and these sets. And it's just, it's, it's cheapens all of it. The whole thing is cheapened. And and when you have, like I've said all along, when you have multiple projects going on at the same time, you're spreading your talent thin. You're having to pull people in that maybe wouldn't be there if you were just doing a movie or just doing a show over like a long extended five-year period of time or something like that. So you've got like hundreds of different people in the writing department, creative department, all this stuff, instead of maybe like 10 or 12. And then those are like the best people that could possibly do it, right? Like George hired the best possible people and that was reflected in ilm obviously and reflected in 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 empire strikes back and in all the films they you know prequels of course had their issues which he was more involved in he didn't delegate enough in the prequels that was part of the problem but when you have all these things going on at the same time and everyone's doing all these shows at some point you have to um use people use lesser than talents that's just a normal thing of course that's what's gonna happen when the Soko was announced, I was ecstatic. The whole show about our girl. She was going to find Thrawn and do whatever she could to stop him. Sure, she probably fails, but she'd fight, rally the troops, and fight again. She'd carve her own path outside of the shadow of her master and do everything she could to keep the galaxy safe. Instead, we got a whole fi- finale centered on stormtrooper zombies because, ooh, more toys. No, they're not. No, no one's going to buy those. No, to- kids aren't buying Star Wars toys. Fat old guys like me. Actually, I don't even buy them anymore either, but fat old guys are the ones buying Star Wars toys. Meanwhile, the last we saw of Shin Hattie and Balin Skull... Two widely interesting new characters was just was them just standing off in the distance, kicking their feet, their arc sacrifice in favor of undead soldiers. Yup. I can't even believe they weren't part of the final fight. Like, that, it's just, uh, what the heck is going on? Not a moment of stakes acknowledged or reckoned with. Not a single narrative arc fulfilled. No real climax to be had. Just six episodes, stepping stone to something else. Exactly. And I've said this again in my review of Ahsoka episode six. Or, I mean, episode eight, the finale. You, you, you don't have to answer all the questions in the first season of a TV show, but... 
you need to answer something. You need to have something there. And Thrawn returning to the galaxy isn't it, because we already knew that was going to happen. And that's all that happened. It was what we knew would happen. So there was nothing there. You, you don't have to answer, again, you don't have to answer all the questions. Leave some things open, of course, for the next season. But you have to give us something. <laughs> She's so right. It's a total bummer. So that's the article. A great article. Um, I'm I'm not a, usually praising IGN. So it's true. It's 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 dog poop. It sucks. It's it's awful. I I it, it, they just did a terrible job. They just did a terrible job. What do you guys think in the comment section? And then of course Lord, ripping off Lord of the Rings and all the other things they did. All these ripoffs. So you guys let me know. Uh, what do you think in the comment section? Did you like Ahsoka? Do you think that this person is true? Do you think that we're making inroads in terms of is the mainstream media, whether it's IGN or other places, are they starting to realize just how bad it's gotten and are more of them going to come out and start talking about how bad it is? Or are we still just in hardcore shill season and they're just going to keep shilling so that they can, whatever, get advertising dollars from Disney or whatever it is? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for listening, guys. If you like this content, please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Feel free to check out any of my other Star Wars videos, my sequels reimagined, as well as some of my other content about other things other than Star Wars. And thanks for listening and watching and have a great day.